is it going boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. How is it going boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Key West. Um, middle of March, well, late March, I take that back. I think it's like March 30th. Anyways, um, I'm gonna kinda get out today get out today and kind of just enjoy the day uh, gas prices are really making it difficult to have fun days on the big boat so i dropped the little boat in got it in the backyard and tipsy and myself are going to head out and have a little bit of fun bring some dive gear and see if we can find lunch come along with us what are you doing tipsy you don't even know it yet, but you're going on the BOAT. So if this is your first time watching, um, welcome. My name is Aaron Young. I live in the, a place called Key West, Florida. And this is my backyard. We have a little canal that connects out to the bay. You'll see here in a sec. Um, we're going to go out and look for some snacks. This is Tipsy. She can be a little annoying from time to time on the boat, but she has anxiety. Doesn't mean she doesn't deserve to get out and have some fun too, right? Let's rock and roll, girl. So I don't really have an agenda. Um, there's so many little islands and whatnot all back here and channels and just little cool places to explore. So we go out here a lot when we hit the sandbar, but I don't spend a lot of time diving or fishing or anything back here. Mainly I'm on the big boat, but thought it'd be fun. So we're going to go explore and kind of wing it. I'm going to head out and see where the wind takes us. came from over there just kind of followed the edge there's a little I don't know if the camera picks it up but my eyes pick it up pretty good a little deep section right here so I'm thinking maybe it cuts through we, we will see cool little spot look at all these little tarpon I'm gonna shut the motor off and well, I did shut the motor off and I'm going to pull us through. I don't want to break any of these mangroves off if I'm driving. Tizzy, I know. I know. Look at this. I know, Tipsy. It's exciting. There's about 40 or 50 juvenile tarpon. Look at them. Hopefully the camera picks them up. Kind of pushed my way through gently, so we'll see if... Maybe start the motor back up, make this a little easier. You can see the tarpon tailing up here. I've actually never even caught a tarpon. Not really my thing, look at them. They're tailing on the surface. Pretty cool find. Tipsy, stop whining. You're ruining the ambiance. Very cool find. I'm more of a meat eater, so I think we will keep moving along. We can find something worth hunting.
that was a pretty cool find. Um, I hope the camera picked it up. There was several hundred tarpon just kind of cruising around, real small ones. I don't know if they're in there feeding or what it was, but that was pretty cool. I think if I ever want to catch a tarpon, I, won't. I know where I'm going to go. A juvenile, anyways. But like I said, I'm a meat eater. Gonna look for a little cleaner water and hopefully something to catch for lunch. Tipsy, get out and run around for a sec. I know she is jonesing to go for a swim. She's freaking out. Surprised she's still on the boat. Normally she sees the sandbar and makes a run for it. Let it rip, girl. Take five and the search continues. I know, you're ruining the vibe. You're supposed to be enjoying yourself. What is there to whine about in a place like this? Go get them. All right, come on, we're gonna go to the next spot. Thank you. So I found a cool little channel um, in an attempt to try and preserve anything that I do find. I'm not going to show you how I got there. If any, if more than one person knows about it, it's not a secret. I'm sure other people have this spot, but I just prefer not to broadcast it publicly. Cool little edge. Um, looks fairly deep, so I'm going to get in and kind of cruise around and see if I can find us some lunch. There's no reason for you to be whining right now. Other dogs are sitting at home right now, stuck inside. Welcome back underwater, everybody. So this is literally first time diving this spot. Um, never been here, never even been in this area before. Um, I jump in, there's just snappers all over the place. A lot of them are small, so I'm trying to just locate a bigger one. And this was literally 10 seconds after hopping in the water. Here's a decent sized one and it gives me a broadside shot. Um, and that's actually not the banana gun uh, 2.0. That's this is a smaller koa. I brought, I have a ton of koas. I brought a smaller one. Um, just, I had planned on the water being kind of dirty, so I wanted something a little smaller, a little more maneuverable. Tipsy, I got lunch. I know that's what you're stressing about. You're probably hungry. And a lot of people ask me why I gut fish in the water. Mainly it's because I'm usually on commercial trips, but to be honest with you, I always brain and bleed, as I always talk about. But another reason I gut at the spot is, you know, this is gonna sound hippie, but I took that fish's life. Those entrails will feed a few more fish. They will by no means let any of that, uh, any of those organs or any of that stomach um, contents go to waste. So the rest of those fish in that area are gonna benefit from that. And I kind of was just kind of doing the, the perimeter of this um, this little canal. Got a little shallower on this end, but again, snappers all over the place. And when there's this many fish, it can kind of be tricky to focus on one. So a lot of times what I do is I'll go down, sit still, let the fish do the work. So I'm laying in one spot. Uh, a little bit bigger fish comes up to me. Now I've got my target. I know which one I'm focusing on. This fish is well within range the entire shot, but I don't 
I'm gonna take a sloppy shot and hit the meat, so I'm just sitting, waiting until it turns broadside and it gives me that go ahead. Um, I talk about that a lot. You know, I am taking these fish to eat, so I want to do as little damage to the meat as possible. It's not very often you see me put a shaft through the fish's, fish's fillet. And that's just a matter of being patient. But this was, it was really just a, was a fun, fun afternoon. Very refreshing. Kind of reminded me of when I first moved here. I wasn't really out, you know, hunting trophies and looking for all these big fish. I just wanted to go out and shoot a few fish to eat and kind of enjoy myself, explore a little bit. The amount of life up in these mangroves and in these little canals is unbelievable. So I start, worked back towards the boat and there was these just giant like ledges almost looking um, caves and crevices that kind of just nudged up under the mangroves and you can see here how many snappers there are swimming around. It truly was impressive to see this much life. Um, and what we call the backcountry because it's fairly shallow all around. This was a pretty deep cut channel. And that was kind of a little hip fire. That fish was so close I, did, I couldn't extend my gun all the way so I just did a quick hip fire there. Dipsy, we're having lunch. Uh, and there's another kind of hip fire and I hit this fish a little high so you'll see instead of grabbing the shaft I go straight to the fish because I was worried it was going to tear out. Um, if a fish looks like it may come off, don't grab the shaft because it's going to give that fish freedom to flop. You can see it was a little high shot. I tried to stone it, but I just hit it a little low. So I went straight to the fish, pinned him into the sand, and got my hands on him. And I was not able to come off and, and flop off that shaft. Tipsy decided she was going to go for a swim while I was spearing. <laughs> what are you doing, crazy? Got your little good spot? You're fine. Yeah, look at that one. Nice one. Nice number. So Madeline's not going to be thrilled with this, but I'm just curious. I love exploring. Um, as I was saying, up under these mangroves, there was a couple caves and kind of dark spots you just couldn't really see. I didn't have a flashlight on me. Um, so I decided I was going to swim into one and just kind of explore, see what was in there. It was fairly dark, I will say, but um, I'll take you along and you can see what happens. So this one kind of looked deep, a little more deeper than the rest, so I kind of just get down to the bottom um, and I pause there at the entrance and try and let my eyes adjust because I don't have a flashlight and it, it's really dark. The camera actually picks up um, the light really well. And as I started to nudge in, you can kind of, you can see the, there's some light there from the other end. So I decided, what the heck, just swim through it and kind of check it out. And just unbelievable. This is up under the mangroves. It's not rock. It's almost like a spongy muddy material uh, that these mangroves grow into and just really cool this i mean this cave is absolutely huge for its location it was it was massive just really cool to see well that was cool Pretty neat, huh? I'll call it a great success. Got plenty for lunch. Some nice mangroves. 
I'll be honest with you. I shot my limit. There were so many. And I love mangroves, so I figured why not. Limit out here is only, I'm in uh, Gulf State waters, so limit is only five per person. 10 snapper aggregate, five bag per species. Mangrove is five, so we've got five beautiful mangroves here. Tipsy, thank you for licking the mangroves. Um, I think it's about time for lunch. I'm, um, I'd like to get like a lobster or a stone crab claw, but I'd say regardless, it's still a pretty phenomenal day. Maybe I'll poke around for a few more minutes and uh, we'll cook up some lunch. Cool spot, huh, Tipsy? I have to save that one for next time. So truth be told, I ran Tipsy back to the house. She was kind of driving herself crazy. And Malin had just been get or just got off work, so I picked her up and swapped her out. I upgraded and yeah, upgraded. Wanted, wanted to come back out here and um, cook some of these fish. And I headed to another new spot, and this is what I found. Look at this. I don't know if this is some type of sponge. I feel like it's like a mangrove. It Rude, almost but... looks like some type of, it, lo it looks natural. It doesn't look like metal or anything, but there is just fish all across here. More mangroves, there's grunts, barracudas. So we're gonna get set up and have a fresh snack. So we ran into another one of these and the more I look at it, it almost looks like, um, there's like this spongy, muddy kind of substance that uh, the mangroves grow into on these like edges. And it almost looks like an old one died and kind of, now that I'm looking at the other one, it looked like it just rotted out and flipped. But it's all hollow underneath. Pretty wild. Look at all these fish. This is cool. I need to come back, back, back here with some live bait. Here, hold this. I think this looks like a good spot. I would say so. Look at all these, look at all the mangroves and the grunts right here. Oh, baby, you almost whacked me with this thing. Hey, look out. <laughs> look at them. Look at them all. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we may have to go come film a grunts and grits episode right here. Ooh, get ready, Will. <laughs> <laughs> this is so Super epic. Super cool, right? I'm going to lose it since Oh. Alright, keep filming. Okay. Wow, look how... Nice and open this is. Gorgeous. Hey, this is so, so cute. Truth be told, I have never done this. So if it fails miserably, we'll just all laugh together. I had to bring some comfort, com comforts from home. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is gonna work. But here's the idea. Especially when we're out on this little boat, there's not a lot of room for like a grill and all that extra stuff. And I thought it would be cool. So what I'm gonna try, got a big steel bowl here, some cable so it doesn't burn. We're gonna float that what? right there. Oh, what? cable so it doesn't get hot and burn. Mm -hmm. Float away on its own. Okay. Viking funeral style. Don't need much. That's why I asked Will this morning how much he liked this pan. <laughs> or how much he cared about it. And obviously I'm going to keep Keep the heat away from the wood, everybody. Relax. <laughs> Whoa! We're gonna let that smolder. This is so epic. 
and get these fish ready for lunch. Well, more like a late lunch. Yeah, baby. It's more like an appetizer for happy hour and, and dinner. Yeah. I, did, I did bring some beers. Doggy. So I've always wanted to do this. This is the first time I've ever been to this spot. That spot I dove today with all the snappers, I've never been there. Um, first time diving it. It just kind of really lucked out today. And I'll be honest, I'm using Google Earth mainly to find a lot of these little channels and whatnot, but there are so many different ones back here in the back country. It's just more than more than you could ever imagine and it seems as if my fire in a floating bowl idea is working so i don't want to get ahead of myself but i'm going to flay these up we're going to cook the whole fish it's just it's a little faster if i take the flays off i cook the carcasses separate so mangrove snapper nothing nothing special you haven't seen here forgot a cutting board but <laughs> That's all right. I don't want to chop up on my pretty deck. <laughs> I was just about to say. Will, Will always saves a couple bones for us. He likes to keep us on our toes. Oh, babe, is this for Madeline? This is M for Madeline. <laughs> I did that on purpose. I'm not getting crazy with this. I'm gonna do a kind of a a quick scale on some of this. I've made videos in the past. There's so much meat left on these carcasses and the collars and even, even on a small fish. Just try to get the loose scales that are gonna come off first. Don't forget the little rib pieces. me a Texas girl so <laughs> this one's gonna have butter in it not, Ooh, all, not okay. olive oil dang babe you do love me Ooh. it's that carry gold the good stuff oh, I could probably eat all of that oh now you change your mind <laughs> I'm gonna make a little hot pocket love this. This is so cool. It's working. Just do this at your own risk. In a safe place. Where it's not going to catch something on fire. I'm actually going to break that. Oh, I hear it. Yeah. I hear it. Wow. And we are cooking, just like that. Good job, babe. Time for a beer. Spread it out. 
Sounds like it's really, really high heat. How long do you cook them for? Filet stuff. It's like three or four hours. Well, when you get the filet out, babe, that's mine. <laughs> Graceful in general, and then we're to put fire into it. Ooh. Look out, look out, coming in hot. We're gonna do the flow. Oh, oh a butter pull. Ooh. The head needs a little bit longer. These fillets look pretty done. These airplanes are trying us. Ooh. I'm gonna give that a second. Snapper is so good to me. It just doesn't, it really doesn't take much. Mangrove snapper. Oh God. Hmm. I mean, anything covered in butter is good, but darn. Ooh. Bugs are starting to get us. You wanna try it? Yeah. I'll leave it on. Yeah, they just itch. It's getting buggy. Okay. Buggy in paradise. Back it up, bro. Mm, I want the mouse butter. It's all the same, babe. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Not too shabby. Wow. So. Ooh, it's hot. Dinner on the water. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> hey, it worked, though. I'm glad that worked. It's good to know, because... I mean, you could even do it with a smaller bowl if you wanted to. Just got to be careful with it bumping into stuff. Keep track of where it's at. But oh pretty God. cool in my opinion. So I think we're going to wrap it up. Bugs are getting bad. We're going to eat this, have a couple beers, and head home. Thanks so much for your time. We do appreciate it, as always. Send us some ideas, what you want to see more of. Like if you're not. Have not. Subscribe if you're not. And we will see you on the next one. Later.